Hey, it's Monday, September 18th. We're going to continue talking about remaining and abiding in Jesus in John 15. We're going to read starting in verse 3. Um, Jesus says, You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So that first part there in verse three, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Jesus is saying, okay, the word of God washes us. And Jesus had been teaching them. He had been pouring into them. We now have the words of Christ. We have the gift of the holy word of God in scripture. And the word of God will cleanse us. This is why we need to sit in our word every single day. We need to ask God, create in me a clean heart, renew a steadfast spirit within me. And we sit and we read his word. Even if we feel like it's not doing anything, it is. It is cleaning us. I heard this teaching, this analogy a while back that was saying like, okay, if I had a, a wicker basket that I got from my garage and it was all dusty and dirty and I brought it in my house and I put it under the faucet and ran it under the water, well, it wouldn't fill up with water because it's a wicker basket and it has all these holes. The water would just go right through it, right? But what would happen to the basket is all that dust and that dirt would get washed off. And I think that sometimes that's like us with the word of God. We think I'm reading the word and I'm not even, I don't even remember what I read yesterday. I, it's hard for me to memorize scripture. I'm not soaking it in. I'm not understanding it. Which again, the Holy Spirit's our helper. He desires to help us to understand the Word of God. It's, it's one of His jobs as our helper. He loves to help us understand the Word of God. So we just ask Him, Holy Spirit, reveal your Word of truth to me as we sit and read His Word. But what we have to realize is what Jesus is saying. You are already clean because of the Word I have spoken to you. When we read the words of God, when we speak the words of God over ourselves, we get cleansed. We get washed, whether we're realizing it or not, we're getting all the junk of the world, all the mindsets that are not pleasing to the Lord, those thought patterns, those negative beliefs, whatever they might be, are getting washed with the word of God. So don't think, oh, it's not doing anything. It is doing something. When we sit in the word, the word of God is all powerful. It really is alive. It really is active. It really is sharper than a double-edged sword. So we have to realize that whether we sit for five minutes or 50 minutes, we're getting cleansed. We're getting washed. So praise God for the cleansing power of his word. But I also want to look at um, the very next verse, verse four. Jesus says, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So Jesus is talking a lot about remaining some. Um, Bible versions say, abide in me as I also abide in you. But I wanted to flip to John chapter six because I've always um, meditated on this. Like, Lord, what does it really mean to remain in you? How do we remain in you? And John chapter six, Verse 56, Jesus says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Okay, so at first this sounds harsh. I mean, this is the passage of scripture when, when the disciples are like, Lord, who could even follow this teaching? This is hard teaching. But we know now we have the fullness of scripture, and we know that Jesus is talking. His body is about to be broken. His blood is about to be shed. And what he's saying here is whoever joins their life with me as one remains in me. And so this is how we remain. Yes, actually taking communion, it reminds us that we're one with Christ. It helps us to remain and abide. But apart from that, we want to daily just join our lives with Christ. How do we do that? We have to let our old life die. We cannot join with the life of Christ if I'm still living my life, my way, my desires, and putting myself first. I can't do that. So I have to, as Paul said in Galatians 2.20, be crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. 
but Jesus Christ lives in me and the life I live in this body, I now live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself up for me so I can give myself up for him. So this is how we remain. It's just day by day, moment by moment, living in Christ, living crucified to our old life, to our flesh, and living as our new creation in Christ, to cre be created to be like Christ. That's what our new creation was created to be, like Christ. And so it's just a daily process of saying, okay, I, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. But the life I live in this body, I live by faith in you, Jesus. And so the decisions we make, the actions that we take, the words that we speak, the thoughts that we allow in our mind, remember we have to take every thought captive and make it obey Christ. We make it obey his word and his authority. And if it's, if it's in line with his word and his authority, we keep that thought. And if it's not, we crucify that thought. It has to be crucified to the cross because it's not in line with scripture. So this is living a crucified life. And so that's why Jesus said, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Because we're living crucified. We're understanding the fullness of the cross that he died so that we could live as a new creation in him. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for your death and your resurrection. And we just come before you this day and thank you. We thank you for your broken body. We thank you for your shed blood. There is so much power, all power, all authority, all dominion is in your name and your power and your blood, Jesus. And so we just come to you this day and we just cut off our old lives and we say we want to be those that remain in you, that abide in you, that live our lives new in you, attached to the vine, never, never unattaching from the vine, but always attached to you, Jesus, as the vine. In Jesus' name, amen.